what is going on guys nsc85 back with another video and today i will be installing the battle line industries sapr stock attachment precision rifle this will be going on my b5 systems sop mod stock that i have on my mega ma 10 as you can see i've done some upgrades and i'm going to do some long distance stuff and even though the B5 SOP mod offers a very good cheek weld, I do want a little bit of a riser, which is why I have this. So I'm gonna go over the installation of this and talk about it a little bit, and then I'll show you how it operates and how to adjust it. Okay, so the first thing I have to do is the factory butt pad has to come off. Again, this is my B5 SOP mod, and there's two tabs, one located here and one located here. I'm going to set this down and press in and push down until it just pops out. There we go. We're going to set that aside. And on the rear of the butt pad, you see two slots, rectangle here, two holes. This is what it should look like. And you're going to take this side screw out of the sapper, slide this off. And then there's also four screws here. These go on this side and then you tighten them up. So we're going to take these off. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. I'll go ahead and do this to all four of them. So now we have this off. We're going to slide this part up and in like so. Take this first one. You can see that there's a small rectangle right there. That's what goes into the recess. Pop those back in. Let's get them screwed in here. Once you got these tight and you're just going to go tight and then just uh, about a quarter turn. I have a little bit longer torque because of the length of this. So just make sure they're nice and snug. It should look like this rectangles are facing down inside that recess and it's nice and tight okay we're going to take the rest of our saper here and you can see the T area that's just going to slide right into place Shlunk. just like that and I'll make mine level and don't screw it in this way because you want this to be recessed the correct way is on this side. And what I typically do, just to make sure that I don't strip threads or anything, is I go backwards, so I, I turn it counterclockwise until the thread seat, you'll hear it click and feel it, and then just go ahead and screw it down. This is completely adjustable, so the cheek weld can go up or down based on this screw. So if I wanted my cheek rise to be a little higher, I would loosen this up, and then you can adjust it. Pretty good range. I don't even know why you would want it that high, but hey, you have the ability to do so. So I'm gonna keep mine at the lowest for right now until I get it back on the rifle. So there's that. Last thing to do is put the rubber butt pad back into place, but before we do that, there is a screw here that will be hidden once you get this in place. And what this is, loosen this up a little bit, this gives you the ability to actually cant your butt pad. And that is because, obviously, no, no two people are the same. Maybe you hold your rifle at a different angle, or you have body armor you want to compensate for. Your, your rifle will be level, but your butt pad you can have angled. Pretty neat. Um, but once you put your butt pad on, you won't get easy access to that screw. So I'm just gonna put mine level, because I'm just gonna keep mine straight and tighten it up. Now we're gonna take a rubber butt pad, pop that in. This goes down and in. Okay, 
And if you need to take this off, you have access through these holes on this side. You'll just need something to get in there to, to push it together. So now the butt pad is installed. So I'm going to go ahead and show what it looks like on the rifle. Alright, so here's the Battleline Industries sapper completely installed. And I'm just going to talk about it for a sec here because I'm sure you guys are curious. First things first, yes, this can move out of the way. You just lift up and it can go to this side. Or you can lift up and it can go to this side. It's ambi that way. You'll notice too that it adds about two inches to the length of pull. So you can actually have your stock more fully forward than extended rearward. So it has more contact with the receiver extension, which personally I think that makes for a more rigid rifle. So I think that's good. The cheek piece at its lowest, which is what I have right now, it's like half an inch. And then remember how I showed you, you can adjust it. You can adjust that way up to like an inch and a half or I think it's an inch and a half, I'm pretty sure. But it really gives you a good range on customizing exactly to where you want your cheek to be. The other thing with moving this out of the way, that gives you very quick, easy access to, in case the optic fails, you whip your optic off, get this out of your way, then you're back in line for your iron sights, if you have backup iron sights. And because this stays on this stock, you can attach different uppers and just move this out of the way if you wanted to. So you'd keep this right in line with other red dots and things of that nature. I can tell you that the overall weight of this, it is, I mean, it's not titanium or anything. It's not going to be super light. But I also have a PRS, a Magpul Precision Rifle Stock. And I did weigh the two. This does come out lighter than the PRS. Um, not by much, but it is lighter. So with the amount of easily adjustable to just slap this to the side, I'd say this has a little bit of a benefit over the PRS. Plus it's cheaper. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them below and I'll get back to you. Have a good day. Talk to you later.